Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, the frosty planet where things became a little less frosty for our uh, farm here because we used warm water, or we made warm ethanol cooling off our steam turbine, but it's cooled off to negative four degrees now, so we're pretty much there in terms of cooling. Um, yeah, so this farm, I just love it. I love it, and I won't hear any complaints otherwise. The heat coming at it from all directions is just the perfect challenge, you know? And, uh, I think it's been great. <laughs> uh, and I won't hear any arguments otherwise. Uh, what I am gonna do is print a dupe who probably can do most things. Yeah, Devin, you seem like a good choice. Um, and we need to name it after a patron supporter. Uh, this dupe's name shall be... Uh, where's my list? This one is going to be Tom. We don't have Tom yet, right? Nope, no Tom. All right, Tom. You are going to be... Drum roll, please. Da, 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 da. The first dupe to live on Alorola. Alurola. Uh, we are going to send Tom over, and Tom is going to live here. Um, I figure we're getting near the end of the series here. This could actually be the last episode. I know. Sad face. Um, so I figured a good, a good finale would be sending a dupe to another planet to live so I'm gonna send Tom over here. The problem is this Atmos suit. How do we manage? Is there a version where you like say dupes can pass without putting on an Atmos suit at all? Or is that not a thing? Um, That might not be a thing. I might need to utilize Uh, an airlock and a ladder and then I'll disable this for now and that way they can do without <laughs> yeah doing that because um, I don't I, yeah I don't think you can just let any dupe through if there is a way to do it I don't know how to do it so we'll do it this way um I have to re-enable that, otherwise Meta Mike can never get home. No! Oh god. You did the worst thing possible, Meta Mike. Alright, unequip your suit. Deliver a suit there. Disable that. I think we'll be good. <laughs> and then Tom, you're going. You're going to Adorola. Which has a rocket in orbit with nobody in it. Because Luan may or may not have a... Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that. So, Tom, we need you to survive. So, the first order of business... Is there Oxalite around here? There's some way down there. Um... Yeah, you've got a bathroom. You've got a little bit of food. You've got 15 days of nutrient bars. I believe... Oh, there's some oxalite up here. Perfect. It came came equipped. Um, and there's more oxalite somewhere. No, there's really not much. Um, so we're going to need to get you a bed. And I'm going to put that up, up high near the oxygen. So furniture, cot... Build a couple tiles. Sure, out of granite. Um, these back walls are kind of annoying. You construct that. What is this even made out of? Just granite? Okay. And glass. Interesting. So we can collect some glass here. So there's your cot. 
You get that built. You've got food. You might not be the happiest person of all time, but you've got a toilet, and you've got a place to sleep, and you've got food to eat. So the first order of business is oxygen, because unlike on the other planet where we had all the oxalite ever, uh, the oxygen on this planet is not included. And mealworms, I think, are generally the, the food you do on normal planets like this. I'll have to, I'll have to figure that out. Um... But yeah, for now, I need some storage as well. I guess you could get your friend. We could go for two dupes here. Demolition skill. Hey, a frozen friend, Liam. No, no, you're not Liam. You are, who's the next patron? Kalarin. Welcome to the second colony, Kalarin where uh, somebody is going to need to do deconstruction. Wow. You have to get that far to do demolition? That sucks. Um, improved strength is for free, though. Definitely do that. And, I mean, everybody should have improved carrying. I think we've already decided that. But you need hard digging, otherwise we have no one with hard digging on the planet. So you'll be the digger, you'll be the whatever, do everything. -er. Unfortunately, it means this stupid shelf means I can't, can't build a cot there. I'll have to deconstruct that, and then I'll build some tiles here, and then I'll build the next cot there. Oh, Kalarn, I'm sorry, you had nowhere to sleep. And then we're gonna need oxygen, so algae terrariums, I think, are the one we want. Or oxygen diffuser. 550 grams goes to 500 grams. These are only 30 grams and 300 grams of water. So you definitely get more oxygen from an algae terrarium and it removes some carbon dioxide? This feels like it implies, oh, consumes, okay. Um, and that needs power. Interesting. 550 grams to 500. How much algae do I have? Not... Uh, I've got a good amount. Uh, where's my... Is it organic? Yeah. Oh, we've got a ton down there. Okay. So I should be good to use some algae for a while. For oxygen. So then, power-wise... Let's see, I think I need a... I need a ladder down... to here, and I'll build a little platform. And I'm gonna need metal, which, let me cancel this for now. There's copper, so we'll be using copper for obvious reasons. That's what we've got. And then I'll make a, uh, a battery plus the oxygen diffuser. Plus, we'll need a hamster wheel for our friends. Buried muckroot. Sure, we'll auto harvest that. I don't know what muckroot is. Single food serving, free food, I'll take it. I don't want sandstone. I want igneous or granite for most things. Okay, I need a storage bin made out of granite. Um, put some basic storage there, and then we need a hamster wheel. 
and a battery. I mean, and some wire. And an oxygen diffuser. Which needs a little bit more metal ore. Okay. And I've been reminded multiple times in comments now, I think I just haven't mentioned it. This is something I know about, probably have forgotten a few times, but the amount of uh, kilograms in a tile gets halved when you actually mine it. So even though this says 317 kilograms of copper, when I mine it, I only get 160 roughly kilograms of copper available to the, to the colony. So that's worth uh, remembering. It changes things a little bit. The nice thing is there's plenty of coal if we look at our, what is that, consumable ore? Actually, there's less than I thought there'd be. I thought there'd be some big patches. There, there might be on other parts of the planet. Um, there's actually not very much coal. There is a nice oil reservoir here. But you have to build, that's the kind you have to build a, a, an extractor on to make it work. Which I do not have. Healing collapse. Uh, that's fine. Alright, you guys are getting stuff done. I forgot to build the other cot. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. And then... We're gonna need to get you guys going with food. I'm a bit concerned. We could go over and get meal wood going. That requires dirt. 10 kilograms a cycle. How are we doing on dirt? That's probably cultivatable soil. 10 kilograms a cycle. Oh, there's so much over here. And each of these is like 900 available, which is 90 days worth of feeding a single one. Or if I have 10 of them, that's nine days a piece. Yeah, that, that should work. I'll have to go around the slime long crap, but that works. So maybe I'll make a little farm over here. I mean, part of the problem is I have to get over to where I can collect it. There's also one up here. Um, but I don't want my oxygen to escape up there. So maybe I should go down. One down there. A couple muck roots, which is some more free food. I wonder how long they take to grow. Hmm. Wow, it doesn't even tell me in here how long it takes to grow. Interesting. Okay, um, mealwood, 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 bristle blossoms need to be lit, and they require water. Okay, how about this? This seems like a decent, um, there's three muck roots in that direction. There's a good amount of oxygen. I'm gonna open that up, and then we're also gonna just head over here. Like so. And get to this area. And that's telling me I don't have enough algae. Fair. Guess I haven't done much algae mining yet. Let's get all that lined out. Classic. Um, Tom, you just got yourself stuck, didn't you? So I guess you can unstuck yourself by just working on this mining. And 
There you go. Nice work. Okay, now we've got oxygen being produced, which is wonderful. Still no CO2 scrubbing, so that'll just keep sinking to the lower levels, which is a thing. It's not very efficient. This uses... I don't know exactly how much power, but it uses an amount of power that makes it so that dupes probably have to run... Yeah, 120 to make 500 grams of oxygen, which is five dupes worth of oxygen. So divide this by five and you get 24 watts, basically. Basically, each dupe needs to be producing 24 watts to take care of their own oxygen needs, is kind of what I'm getting at with all that. Um, and a dupe uses how much per day? Um, why can't I remember? That's like all colonies put together. That's definitely not just this one. It's 100 times, yeah, it's 60 kilograms a day. So, that's gonna blow through the algae pretty fast. But there's a lot over here. Sort of. Hmm. Yeah, but we will run out. We will need an electrolyzer eventually. And then the water will run out, because we don't have a ton of water. That is the nice thing about the other base, is there's ice and water everywhere. Here, not so much. But food is priority one. We'll deal with food. Let me make some farming tiles. Um... I will put them... Where will I put them? Maybe just right here. Alright, so I will enable harvest of the muck roots. Oh! There's a mealwood right there. That's crazy. Um, and then, don't I need a... Do I need a kitchen thingy? Do I need a microbe musher? I forget uh, for the mealworm stuff what I need to do. Microbe musher can make dirt. Yeah, for lice loafs. I do need, oh, you need a lot of water for lice loafs. I don't even think that's worth it. I think it's better to just eat the meal lice and just suck it up for now. And then, yeah. Wow, that's actually pretty good. Plus two for that, but you need tallow, which comes from those spigot seal things. Okay, so I won't worry about that for a while. Um, old generator, jumbo batteries, nothing too crazy. There's some oil down there, lead, ethanol. Oh, another thing uh, that I completely forgot about, mentioned by Graham in the comments that I should point out, is one thing, entombed buildings. Uh, wait, where? Oh, uh, I don't really care about that. We're ignoring the rocket for now. Uh, anyway, one other thing. This still hasn't cooled off over here? Uh-oh, how close are we? Uh, we're close. It's it, the ethanol is negative twenty, so it will it will cool off. Um, yeah, yeah, we're okay. We are okay. This is nice and cool. Negative fourteen. Okay, we're fine. It'll get there. It's just taking a minute. Um, for now, enable the harvest of the extras. Anyway, the thing that I completely forgot about is we can. 
take plastic and melt it into naphtha. And naphtha has a huge temperature range, negative 50 to 540 and SHC of 2.2. So we could use naphtha instead of petroleum. So I could just melt um, melt some plastic. The, it is kind of hard to melt plastic. What's the temperature? Uh, we need to get it to 160. So I guess what I could do is put... Can you make a plastic? I don't even know how I'd do it. Um, so it'd be a little tricky to melt it. There's probably some, some nifty ways, but I don't know what they are. But by melting it into naphtha, then we would have something we could use uh, for the metal refinery as coolant that would work better than this system that then we could just pipe over to here and back. And it we'd never have to worry about it being too too hot to burst out of the pipes. So that's the thing. Uh, is this still working properly? Seems like it. Thousand degrees. Still getting free power. And... Oh yeah, this also needs to be cold and it's not. So <laughs> I don't really care to do the project, but I really should wrap, I should pipe this all the way over. Um, do I even have enough rock for that? Like that's an absurd amount of stone that that's gonna cost. Yeah, if we're using igneous, I have 65,000. Also, I can't go across this pipe section. That's a screw up. I can't, I can't cross that. Okay, well now I definitely don't want to do it. All right, we're gonna ignore it for now. Ignoring it has always worked in the in the history of doing things. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. All right, so you guys need to plant meal wood. Now, this makes meal life 600 kcals every three cycles, so that's 200 kcals a day. So I need five of these per dupe. Yikes. It means I'm using 100 kilograms of dirt a day. Interesting. Um... So I've got 16.4, not to mention the bathroom dirt, which I should make another bathroom. Um, so yeah, it's really not a great food long-term. Short-term it works. Yeah, an oil. What's oil's uh, properties here? You gotta get it really hot to turn it into petroleum. SHC of 1.7 and petroleum is SHC of 1.76. So weirdly enough, naphtha is actually better. Naphtha is 2.2. So that could be another aqua tuner liquid if we've got hot stuff. Um, it does only go to negative 50, but that's still plenty. That's plenty. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Are there any buried uh, volcanoes? Probably over here. In fact, we actually know by looking at the star map that there's doesn't this show us? Yeah, there's a liquid sulfur, a carbon dioxide, a minor volcano, and an oil reservoir. Interesting, can we see where all of them are or just the ones we've found? Uh, I don't know, did it take me to a specific spot when I clicked on that? No, okay. So that one we haven't found, but sulfur we haven't found, and carbon dioxide we haven't found. But if you click on oil reservoir, oh, never mind, I lied. It doesn't take you straight to it. <laughs> I thought it did. <clears throat> okay. Well, you guys need more projects. You're just running around doing nothing. So grab another meal wood from 
down here. One right there. And then we can get a lot more algae from over there. I can get diamond, which is nice. And yeah, so an order of business would be a sieve. So a plumbing loop with a sieve and plumbed bathrooms. Because then we can, because that's actually a positive. We actually get extra water from that, which doesn't produce anywhere near enough water for them to breathe, right? We, we did that math way back when, but it still helps. So, I think I'm gonna go down another level. This will be where the bathroom is. I already got an outhouse and a wash basin, ironically. I guess that's their idea of trying to help you. There is a good amount of water in here. I'm, I'm not, I haven't missed it, don't worry. I do see that. Um, that will be useful at some point. But even then, you know, when they're breathing 60 kilograms of oxygen a day, that's like 70 kilograms of water a day that you need from somewhere to produce that oxygen. It, it's not, it's not easy to get that much going. Each dupe only produces bathroom wise, like seven kilograms a day or something, right? I forget. 11.7 kilograms per use versus five. So they produce 6.7 net positive kilograms of water. So yeah, they only produce 10% of what they need. Um, so yeah, we need two lavatories, and then we have to go over to medicine for the sinks. Which I've always thought is we- ah, oh, crap. No, I'm just kidding. Ugh. I need a door, because this needs to be a bathroom. Um, and then need sinks and toilettes and then floors. And I really should be using airflow tiles for these. Because we'll have plenty of copper here. How did- Oh, he went around the side. I was like, how did you get there, dude? That scared me for a second. Okay, and I'm totally okay having this water spill down, because then it'll just spill in with this water. I'll just make one big pile of water. Okay, so that'll be plumbed, and then I'll need the sieve which I can put underneath, I guess. Let me do a little bit of airflow here. And then we'll do regular, or Two regular tiles, two airflow tiles, and then some regular tiles, so that then I can do refinement, water sieve. And then we can connect that up with regular pipes, because nothing's gonna freeze. Oh, that's such a good feeling. My goodness. And I'll just go straight in. That goes into those. Uh, maybe I need, no, I need a, a addition loop. Um. Yeah, like that. Wait. No, that's the out. The in is over here. Um. We need an additive loop with a pump. Yeah. 
And a pitcher pump won't cut it. It has to be a regular pump. So something like this. And I open that up. Perfect. And that should let that water spill out. Uh, we'll have to install a pump, of course. And then we'll have to power it. And I would like to automate it. What do I need to make? A rock crusher. Yeah, I need to make a rock crusher so I can have a little bit of metal to install the automation. It is a little easier the second time around. Because, uh... We don't have to do the research. So that saves us a lot of time. And then down here somewhere we'll have to put a CO2 scrubber. Sweet! Alright, our new little colony is humming right along. We're almost out of the oxalite over there. Uh, we are going to be out of food soon, if I'm not paying attention. Um... Oh, water weed. Too wet. <laughs> Likes liquid, but not too much. Um... I'm just going to uproot those. Definitely need some more meal wood. Crystal blossoms need light. That is unfortunate. I don't think it's worth it, and I don't have the water for it anyway right now. Look, they don't have to know Luan's up here. They can't. They can't see Luan. They don't know. <laughs> they they don't know nothing, and that is totally okay. Totally acceptable. Oh, I also just realized I don't have a compost pile. Compostable into dirt. I definitely need that. Because this takes... Oh, this actually produces dirt. Interesting. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's still the 6.7 kilograms of production per cycle. Um, it's just interesting that you can produce in the form of dirt rather than water because then this would clean the dirt so it's like you could end up netting dirt every day it's not really enough it's not even enough for one mealwood plant but it's something all right well they'll get all this done someday it's a project where are you going Oh, you're working on the ladder? Okay, quick check-in at our original colony here in Passato. Uh, we've cooled back off most of our plants. We haven't starved, though it's kind of closer than I'd like, but the cooling loop should, should get us back to normal here. Looks like we're at negative 23, which is great. So this is back to, back to where it's supposed to be. Our steam turbine is nice and cool. Well, the steam is nice and hot. That's the way we like it. And now it seems that the aqua tuner is not running constantly, which is good. So. Yeah, there you go. Um, again, there, there's so many little things we could do. I, this, is, this base is such a mess, but... 
I'm proud of it. I'm proud of what it's accomplished. I don't think it needs to be... Uh, doesn't need to be fixed. This is, this is great. I just can't believe... I just can't believe how the farm ended up being, like, in the midst of two hot areas, and I, I never, I never put insulation around it. Except this one little spot. Um, but yeah, it's like, all this stuff makes heat, you know, and it flows over. All this stuff makes heat, and it flows over. Uh, someone pointed out that I'm flowing the ethanol past this stuff before the farm. It's like, yeah, that was on purpose. Once it's... Once it's steady state cool enough, it works fine. The problem is when I run a bunch of things and the ethanol's not quite cool enough that, you know, we started to have issues. So, like, that was on purpose. It maybe wasn't the best decision, but... I was wanting to keep all this stuff cool, too, because eventually you do get too hot with all your production. So it's like, oh, keep the whole base cool on this one loop was the hope. And now I've completely melted this entire area of polluted ice with the, uh, the hot steam here. Wait, there's steam in this tile. Oh, that's, we're actually conducting heat out right now. That should fix it. Oh, okay, crap. That was an issue. Okay, now this will cool down. And that will heat up. Shoot. Okay, well that was a mistake. That's just been conducting heat out forever. No wonder this is all melted and it's gonna keep melting. LOL. Oh well. Our obsidian is still a thousand degrees here, but we have completely solidified the igneous rock here. But this is... we have so much heat in here to, to steal for our power needs. Wonderful. Alright, anyway, back to uh, Alurola. How are things looking? Uh, pretty good. I'd like to mop this up. Pressure damage? What the heck? Pressure damage on a farm tile? What? I've never even heard of such a such a thing. What does that even mean? Is it because there's salt water on top of it? What the heck? Wait, oh, some weird some okay. Um, it's because there's too much salt water underneath it. It like, when I built it there, it pushed salt water down into that tile. And then that ended up making way too much pressure. That's super interesting. Um. Oh, now there's salt water with my water. Crap. Crap on a crapper. Um, what if I dig out this? That should, uh, maybe we'll be able to fix it that way. No, 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 ah, oh, crap. Okay, hopefully the salt water stays over here. I guess if I prioritize this higher. Might be okay still. This is all regular water. Oh no, a piece of salt water got over here. Crap. Maybe we can mop it all up. Maybe we're okay. Okay, well. I mean, you get the idea. You know, this is what this is what dupe life will look like as we get a second colony going. I do like the idea of a second colony, you know, the spaced out DLC kind of adding other asteroids and starting you out connected to one. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and it seems we succeeded in catching the salt water. So that's good. But yeah, it's a, it's a really cool idea, and I feel like it's kind of fun to get to make a second colony, you know, that starts out... Of course, there's too much salt water in there. Um, it starts out with all the technology already researched, so now we can, like, build more advanced stuff from the get-go, which is super nice, and... I don't know, it's fun. Because you're, like, starting over but not starting over. 
And I, I kind of like the mixture of that. And we can bring back new and different resources from this planet. We can bring back zombie spores. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. Because, yeah, once we get this bathroom going, then that'll be a closed loop for water. And then food will be pretty much done. Except for not having enough mealwood plants quite yet. And then obviously we'll need 100 kilograms of dirt a day, which adds up. Uh, is it only 100 kilograms? Um, why are you not telling me? Dirt. 10 kilograms a cycle. So, 100 kilograms of dirt a day. I already have 16.4 tons on this planet, which means I have 164 days. Am I reading that right? I think I'm reading that right. Uh, yeah, so I mean... And there's way more dirt, right? Like, I have so much more available. Like, down here... You know, each of those is 900 kilograms that I actually receive, which is nine days worth of feeding these two dupes. So I don't... I wouldn't really... And there's so much over here, too. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't need a new solution to food until we have probably more dupes. If I kept this, if I just kept these two dupes going, we could feed them for a long time without any new, without any new solutions. Um, and I might actually do one more because I think this was technically exactly what I would need to sustain two dupes. And I think a little bit of extra is good. All right, and copper ore to copper. I need a couple of those for our automation so I can turn on and off a pump. You know, just being able to have a signal switch and a couple automation wires will make it so that I can just turn on the liquid pump as needed. I will connect it mostly. All right, the sieve is installed. The punching is getting punched. Oh yeah, Tom, get it. Oh, except for hamster wheel power ran out. I did build the smaller battery on purpose because it loses less per day. How much does it lose per day? Yeah, it only loses one kilojoule per cycle. The other one loses, I think, two. But this also just doesn't store very much. But that's okay. I don't need a ton. That was enough right there to get me my signal switch. Plus automation wire. So. I'll just finish out that last one and call it a day, actually. And they're almost done with all the piping. So we've almost got bathrooms and hand washing figured out. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Bathrooms, hand washing, food. Once those propagate, we'll be there. They do propagate, right? Yeah, seed harvest chance 10%. So. I have six of them. Shouldn't take that long. I think I've grabbed all the ones I can reach. I could go down there to get another one. I could go over here to get another one, which apparently I've already queued up. It's just not happening because it's so far away. I could go up to get another one, but then I let my oxygen up. I don't love to do that. We're already doing that here, um, but I figured it's okay because this is hydrogen, so mostly we're not going to let too much oxygen up here because the hydrogen will stay on top. I realize this makes a noise. Kind of annoying. I mean, it's a cool noise with the graphic, but just adding a random noise to your base that is a constant noise that will never stop feels a little odd. 
I guess if you zoom out, you can't hear it. That feels like noise for the sake of noise. Alright, signal switch off. Means it won't turn on when we connect the power. So we can just turn it on when we want it to turn on. And we still need a couple more pipes here. Why are those not getting done? Priority six, that construction. And I think we're good to go with all of that. This just needs sand. Which it has. How much sand do I have? Uh, 11 tons. And we have sandstone that can also be turned into sand. And anything can be turned into sand. So, right. I have, I have plenty of sand. Everything is sand. <laughs> but never mind. We're good. Alright. Here we go. Yeah! Alright, so we send the water into all the bathrooms and such. Um, and that's it. I might have done too much. Shoot. Really? They only hold five kilograms at a time. I see. Okay. Um... So I needed almost a longer pipe because this is not going to hold enough for many usages, but that's okay. So for now, I'll just disconnect these two then. Okay, so now I can disable these forever. And does this count as a bathroom room? It does. They get morale from that, having a washroom. Good for them. Here I'll be able to grab another meal wood. Another meal wood seed. What else is down here? A nosh sprout? Noshing on some sprouts. Nosh bean. Um it needs ethanol and dirt. That's expensive. And a CO2 atmosphere. And it needs to be cold. That's a pretty needy. That's a pretty needy plant. Um, it won't let me click on the nosh bean, which is weird. I get 12 of them per, per harvest, though. But I don't know, like, does that mean 1,200 kcals of them? I don't think that's necessarily what that means. I don't know. Okay, so there's our mealwood seed. That should get us... Wait, what's wrong with you? Body temperature. Ooh, it's way warmer over here than I thought it would be. Interesting. So I guess I should have built it over there. Uh, is there an easy way to cool things off without doing some crazy aqua tuner setup? Uh, there is the ice fan. Hmm. I guess I try it. The problem is there's no ice. Uh oh, I can I could transport ice here from the other planet. I could bring the cold. <laughs> there's an idea. I also can build a mini printing pod um so that I can print stuff on this planet. I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. Let me build that so we can find out. It also makes light for free. So I just realized I could grow bristleberries next to it. Um, again, the problem with bristleberries is water. They require water every day, and I don't know if I want to sign up for that. 20 kilograms a day, too. Activate it? Weird. Oh, does that deactivate the other one? Is that what happens? 
maybe. Okay, so that one's active. And then if I go to this one, is it unactive? No, it's also active. Interesting. But I can print a fungal spore. Dust caps, I think, are pretty good. What do they need again? Dust cap. 5 to 35 degrees. Oh, they need slime. That's right. That's right. They need slime. 4 kilograms a day. But they make good food. 2,400 kcals in 7.5 cycles. But yeah, until you can deal with slime lung, it's a problem. And I forget exactly how you deal with slime lung, so I ain't touching the stuff. Not in this playthrough. Maybe next time. Maybe the next time. Now, why is this not... Oh, the pipe is blocked. Okay. That's fine, because once they use up all the water, the polluted water will build up a little bit, but it should kind of just flow. Flow as we go. Um... Yeah, there's no ice. That does make sense. Now, we can make ice, right? Surely that is a heat-positive loop, I would imagine. Otherwise, things would be too easy. Yeah, we make heat to turn water into ice or snow. So this, this is kind of an early way to move heat, right? Like, I have this thing running on electricity. And then they make ice here, then they bring the ice over there, and it brings the cold. AKA, it brings the heat from here down to there, in a weird way, by bringing cold the other way. Um, but it costs power to do that. But let's try it. Oh, we don't have water. Oh, good, we have enough mopped water that they can handle it. Oh yeah, that thing heats up fast. Jeez. So what, I need a temp shift plate for that? Goodness. Um, I think just a rock temp shift plate is fine. Sedimentary rock. I don't remember if temp shift plates interact with buildings or not. I am not really certain. Or if it's just buildings interact with air, and then the temp shift plates interact with the tiles only. I don't think temp shift plates interact with the air. Or if they do, it's not by very much. Oh, there it ran a little bit. Sweet. Mmm, yummy. Yummy grubbies. Okay, I just want to see if this fan actually cools things off or not. These things are not very cool, as is. Also, uh, I can just get ice right here. Or, not ice, water, sorry. That's available. Just gotta open it up. Oh, there we go. 32,000 DTU deletion. Okay. It's not bad. And then what happens? Does it splash a big splash into water? Well, what, what happens to the water? It just disappears. Okay. Got it. Oh, it gets collected into a water bucket. Okay. Well, believe it or not, that might be enough to, to cool this area off. Might just be enough. Sweet! Okay, well, I think I'm going to have to call it an episode there, and I think this is the perfect finale, episode number 20 for our Oxygen Not Included series. It's been a great time. For those of you that have... Uh, 
continued on the journey with me. I appreciate your patience with me basically being a total noob at this game, despite having put in over 100 hours. I basically forgot all of it. So we learned a lot of things in a short amount of time and hoping to come back to the game not too long from now. It really is, I just love the mechanics. I love, you know, like for me, being able to do something like this is so cool because it's it's like, it's sort of finicky, but it's the fun kind of finicky for me where once you get it set up, it feels so good. And, you know, being able to set up systems like this that end up creating free stuff for you or, you know, using the natural gas to get free power. And then now it feels like, it's almost like solar power in Factorio. It's like, oh, now my, my world is unlocked because I get free power. And now my dupes can do other things with their time. And now that I have free power, that means some amount of free cooling. And then free cooling means blank. And then you can, you know, I didn't even get into like moving the wheeze warts around, which those are important because those are just deleting heat. And there's all sorts of stuff. So yeah, I, uh, I barely scratched the surface of this game, to be honest. I mean, it's crazy what all you can do. So uh, yeah, but we'll call it there. Cycle 306, time played 28.85 hours. We've had a lot of fun. And I think we will we will bid this colony adieu for now. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to support me making content, I would be uh, very appreciative if you'd consider uh, supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Crydax. Uh, the, it was as low as $2 a month and that all really helps me continue to make these videos. So if you've enjoyed, I just ask that you consider it. Obviously there's no pressure. Um, you get to decide what's worth your money and I'm not gonna tell you that it's supporting me on Patreon. But if it is, then I would very much appreciate it. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments about Oxygen Not Included and how you feel about Satisfactory, which is gonna be the next series. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining.